right, this is one I am pretty excited about. We have got a 1972 Monte Carlo that has a really cool backstory. It didn't run, so I had to go pick it up and trailer it. I got it here, and I was already working on the 54 at the time. I pulled it in and thought, let's go ahead and get the drivetrain out of it and see what we have to work with. I decided, you know, this old tire 350 in its heyday put out like 160, 170 horsepower or something like that. I mean, it, it was pretty anemic, little two barrel 350, turbo 350 car. So I decided I'm going to get it fired up. So I played with it a little bit. Sure enough, it started up. Still sounded healthy, but uh, definitely wasn't running right. Yank that dude out and set it aside. And after we get the engine out of it, and I've got it up on the lift, and I'm looking, and the body mounts are literally gone. There's nothing there. I throw it up there. I start lifting it. It's it's very little work on these. Just some you know, undo the master cylinder and the e-brake cables and a couple other things, and boom, that thing's up and off, and we've got the the, the body off the frame. Man, I tell you, the frame was so nasty things kind of started to snowball. It went from, all right, let's put body mounts on it too. And this frame is really nasty. Why don't we do something to it? So we stripped it down and went with the zero rust, uh, rust encapsulator and sealed the whole frame. Well, while we're in there, the suspension's a little tired. Well, might as well. So we go ahead and tear the suspension apart, go all new suspension. Well brakes, you know, yeah, they're, they're okay, so we, we upgraded the fronts, they were pretty old and tired, so we upgraded the front rotors to a set of power stop rotors and a good set of pads, so nothing major up there. The rear, we left drum, everything was clean there, they were really new, and yeah, with new wheel cylinders, so the hydraulics were good. Once we get everything back together, it kind of set the project in motion, where, yeah, it has that patina kind of rough look on the outside, but you get underneath this thing, oh, it's beautiful. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Drivetrain wise, I decided to go with tried and true LS. Why wouldn't you? So 5.3, 4L60, buy the cores, get them here, and open the engine up, and it's got a huge rust spot in one of the cylinders, and it wouldn't hone out. The rest of the engine looked perfect. I mean, it probably would have ran. Uh, just hit the key and go. I went ahead and I, I got online and I looked and I bought the biggest set of stock replacement pistons that I could find, which is 40 over. Went with flat tops instead of the dish. So with the uh, 706 small chamber heads, that guy is about 11 to 1 compression. So I like that. Nice high compression, brings your torque up. And being that the, the knock sensor and the knock strategy on the GM stuff, you don't have to worry about the compression. Mike's going to run premium gas in it all the time. Should make north of 400 horsepower all day long. Uh, 4L60 went with my normal upgrades, you know, and if, if you watch one of my other videos, you can see some of the upgrades that I do to a 4L60. And put this thing together, and then again, just like the 54, I kind of hit a roadblock in 2020 picked up a huge fleet account. All the projects got stuffed into the, the other other side of the shop and just sat. After I got done with the 54 last year, about this time, uh, I just got going on this thing full bore. Those of you who have been in these cars before, you look at them and they've got a fan shroud that's about this deep you know, on the stock motor. Well now I've got no fan and no shroud and at first I thought, wow this thing, I mean it, it looked funky. Once I got accessories and electric fans and the hoses and all that stuff, it's still a ways back there and everybody when I pop the hood looks at it and goes, wow, that thing is way back there. But it still has a good look and it gives it a good balance as well. It set it far back enough that it changed the weight distribution a little bit where the front was way jacked up. I had to cut almost two full coils off just to set that thing back level. So when, when I got the suspension together, had to take it apart and drop it so the front is lowered, 
probably a good two inches just to get everything dialed back in. Plus the LS is a little bit lighter. We did a little trial and error with some intake manifolds and Mike decided he liked the look of the car intake. So it's a Dorman replacement LS intake. It's kind of a conglomeration, a couple different pieces that Dorman took. It's actually a Fast 92 base with an LS6 top on it. So it's a pretty decent piece. Put that together with some aftermarket rails. It turned out real nice. So for exhaust, we went with a set of shorty stainless headers. They're designed for an S10 swap, but the frames are so similar between the Chevelle slash Monte Carlo frame and an S10 or a G body that the same headers would fit. So bought a set of those, slapped them on there, fit perfect. Little bit of Monte Carlo progress. Looks like a jumbled mess, but that's my level of organization I got going for now. And got an AC condenser, get that installed today. And also going to install a fuel pump and I'll paint the tank, get it all cleaned up, nice looking before we install it, but wanted to get the hole cut. So I got this kit. I got mine from CPP because I buy a lot of parts from them. I'm gonna read some instructions, and I know you can hate on me later, but I figure I'd read the instructions here, make sure to get all my measurements right, and show you some progress in a few. Holes cut. Everything's bolted down, the mounting ring, got the gasket in there. Everything looks good. Pump modules all together. Gotta to put my fittings on there. I'm not gonna use that vent because the factory has a venting system that vents through the filler. I'm not worried about that. Get this all vacuumed out. Thanks, clean. A little rusty on the outside, but we'll clean it up and paint it. I'll put some of that aluminum paint, silver color, around it here before I put this together. Just wanted to make sure everything fit before I make it look pretty. Let's see if I measured right. happy with that. Got the feed coming out here straight ahead. Return will come in there. Like I said, I'll plug that vent. I'm liking it. Got some progress on the Monte Carlo AC condenser in. Looking good. Nice fit. I was able to use some of the factory brackets which made me happy. And I'm making AC hoses now. Got rid of the old style stuff. Went with a more modern orifice tube, modern dryer, sand and compressor. So I got the discharge and the suction hoses to make. And then I oh, should be all finished up at that point with the AC. That's a set of fans I had. They're just dusty. Still in good shape though. Number 10. That's for the suction hose. Close it up. Put the pin in. They're all lined up. Okay. And I like to use just a wrench. Crank this guy down. It'll kind of crimp nice and even. Pretty well squoes down nicely. Back it off. And there you go, just like factory. March 1st, 2022, got the money just about ready to go. I hit the key earlier and the starter spins and that's good news. So I think I'm gonna unplug the injectors, make sure it's gonna spin over and pump some oil and small victory. I moved it outside and of course, welcome to Texas, it rained, and now the thing is filthy. 
Oh well. That cleans up. Updates here. Got brackets made for the fuse panel. Turned out all right. ECM tucked away up under the driver's side fender well. Battery. Got the cables made. Use some factory stuff just to reuse and keep the cost down for the cables. But about to spin it over. Let's see how she does. Let's watch that water bottle right there. That is an affirmative. We have oil. Excellent. Another first, reading the tune that's on the ECM right now. EFI Live, my software of choice. And got about 35 seconds left on the read. Got all the vacuum ports plugged off, injectors plugged back in. Had a few wiring issues that didn't really catch on camera, but uh, it wasn't very exciting. Just frustrating. So, I'm gonna give it a shot, see if it'll fire up. It's just a bone stock tune on it. It's probably gonna run like garbage if it starts. But, let's see. Fire and hole. Fire the hole! Get away! Get away. Tune's just too rough, I think. Oops. I could get there quick enough. Ugh. Try one more time. Got the exhaust pretty well done on the Monty. Don't have any tailpipes on it. Putting transmission fluid in it. Just putting some water in it so that it'll I can run it a little longer. And then we're gonna see what it sounds like with exhaust. Also, put a little bit of a different tune in it, should run a little better. Still not totally tuned, just did a few tweaks so it should run. I'll have to go drive it a while before it'll run right. Alright, here's a little trick. Got the seal here. I always do this and I'll take it and I will pack it full of grease 
kind of like that before I knock it in and that'll keep that spring if you hit it sometimes that spring will bounce out and if you don't catch it it'll wad up in a bearing or the seal will leak or both and none of it's good but little trick for you guys then I also around the outside here I always put just a little thin smear of silicone because who knows how many times this seal's been out or someone drove a screwdriver into it and galled up the housing it can happen so anyways my nice little miss with the hammer Doing some work on the money today. Get the rear suspension rebuilt. And that's the bushing that is on the differential on the passenger side. And hopefully y'all can see this. Man, that thing is cut. What we're going with, we'll have full urethane. Got energy suspension here. Nice setup and kind of a universal kit, so it's got a lot of stuff you don't use. That's what we're doing today. All right, how do you get bushings out if you don't have a press? There it is. Old bushing out. We'll press new ones in, and all I'll do is I just take these apart when they're urethane. I hammer the shell in, grease it up, pop the new bushing in there, make sure it's lubed up, and you're done. But it actually runs. It runs. I just wanted to see it move. <laughs> That's awesome. Experience. 
made some progress. went with a classic instrument stash. It's made by Autometer, and Mike went with the Phantom Gauges, which wasn't my pick at first, but I tell you what, that really set it off. The nice white backing on those gauges and that matte black finish on the, on the dash bezel that, that Autometer provides, really nice. Classy look, looked great. This is an Autometer gauge kit. Comes with the panel, the gauges, and a universal harness. The part I really like about it is you don't have to do spade connectors or anything on the gauges. They're just all plug and play. Uh, you do have to hook up the lights, which I thought was a little weird, but hey, is what it is. Um, I'll have to cut some of the dash apart and um, the factory dash. I've got to cut the top portion and excuse the wiring mess. But that top portion I've got to cut off, it's in pretty bad shape anyway. It's all cracked up and falling apart. But uh, tying in for the factory wiring here, working on you, everything picked up. Um, the only thing I'm having trouble with right now is finding the temp center. I know where the wire is, but I'm not getting any continuity up here. We'll find it. But yeah, once it's done, literally plug this plug in and that's it which I really like that way if you ever got to remove the gauge cluster it's just plug and play right around the time of LS Fest which was in May of 23 had it just about done I had it driving I was getting a really rough tune into it and then Ran into a few electrical problems. Decided to go ahead and trailer this thing to LS Fest. So, kind of cool. I got represented with the Monte Carlo, the 54, and my boat. So, my three best LS swaps I've done here recently. And I tell you, it was awesome show. It's cool to see it there. Here we are with Mike. Mike is coming to grab the Monte Carlo. It is not 100% ready. Nope. But... We're going to take it on a trailer at LS Fest and drive it in. I just didn't feel comfortable with turning it loose, rocking it down the road, and him getting, he lives roughly an hour away. So mm -hmm. I didn't want Mike to get stuck or something happen, and I want it to be right. Yeah. So does he. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Very excited. Very cool. <laughs> He's a perfectionist, so if I gave him something that was eh, I might get in trouble. Right. Okay. Cool. Hop in it. We'll fire it up and then I'll get stuff moved out of your way so we can load it. Okay. There she blows. There she blows. Right. There. Let's do this first. Turned out good, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. A 2023, 1972 model. Uh, 20, 2005 engine. Okay. So hop in her, fire it up. My laptop's sitting there. We'll grab that in a minute. Okay. Yep. Being a 72, I'm used to pumping the carburetor. No, nope, no pumping needed. There's the other problem that cropped up the other day. Squeaky belt. Yeah, I got to adjust some stuff. Roll that down. Looks good, huh? Turned out good. Look, your, your dreaded check engine light. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I'll give you a list of what I got to do to get it dialed in here in a, here in a little bit. So. It's very rough. That sounds awesome. It sounds good though. It does sound good. Yep. Nice, nice, love it, white letters. This is gonna match this yep. thing perfect. You know, that's, that's coming back in. Oh, I know, I know.
right. There you go. There goes Mike. See you guys. scare going on here driving the money trying to get it tuned you can hear it won't shift into overdrive and when it does try to shift in it's got a severe severe vibration and it almost acts like it wants to lock up I don't know what this thing's doing but we got to get it back home get it to the shop see what's going on dog bone it if it ain't one thing it's a million Ouch. Not a hundred percent sure, but I don't believe that's a good thing to see in a transmission pan. Let me know what you think.